Welcome to the 2012 World Cup edition of the Dirter Headshot brought to you by Razalife.com. The Saturday game started out with 187 crew going up against Edmonton Impact. Both teams were winless for this event so far, so have a seat, get comfortable, and let's watch some penalties fly. Uh, we already had a pretty rough tournament playing Dynasty and Heat and we dropped both those games and it's just really frustrating and kind of embarrassing coming out here and playing nothing like our talent dictates we should play like. Uh, it was a penalty heavy game, both teams getting major left and right. Uh, there was a lot of four on fours, four on fives, right off the break. Uh, it was pretty fairly called, both teams got just about the same amount of penalties. Uh, we luckily got up, up 4-1 on them right away and it was uh, a little bit easier for us to keep that lead. It's a tough game, there's some crazy calls down at the end, but it, we came out with the win. Uh, we thought we were going to come into World Cup with a little bit better of a showing. Uh, one and three is, is not what we were looking for, obviously no one's looking for that. Uh, it's hard playing with seven guys, but I think next year we're going to come with some more talent and uh, definitely step it up. We're past our rookie rookie year in the division and uh, we really got to show it. Um, we have to come with more experience and win a lot more games. We want to make Sunday, we're hungry for it. So I think next year you guys are going to see 187 on the podium. I think the refs have something against the Canadians. He is having way too much fun doing that. 187 gets the win, but leave World Cup with a 1-3 record. Following that match, we have two more winless teams so far. Sacramento Excessive versus Seattle Thunder. Although Excessive was 0-2, they came out with something to prove and played well against the struggling Thunder. Even gave them some bonus balls. Uh, rough game, 100%. A lot of paint problems. Uh, I don't want to blame it on that. They had a lot of bad moves. Uh, they had a lot of paint issues as well. So beat us up pretty bad, man. Look forward to next season. A little broken pain at first, you know, but uh, we put it together. We were losing a few bodies off the break, but we were doing a good job of shooting people finally. And, you know, we finally got our first win. We had a couple of hiccups yesterday and the day before with some, you know, just getting used to the lead and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we came out on top today and we're, we got to win one more match. We got to get a heavy win against damage. And uh, that might put us in, but, you know, we take it one point at a time, one game at a time. Thomas Taylor showing that it doesn't matter that he has blown out his knee 47 times, he can still work that snake and kill the whole team. At this point, Excessive not sure if they can make it, but they get the win 5-1. to one. Next up is LA Infamous versus Omaha Vicious. Vicious doing a great job laning people off the break and then pushing hard up the middle. Infamous not having much luck getting several penalties, and Vicious doesn't fail to capitalize. We just got done playing uh, Infamous, started out the game, we won the first point, they won the second one, ended up just going back and forth, and then we started to get on a roll. We got a major, ended up playing playing two points with a major or whatever, grinded that one off, they got some penalties. Brian played up the middle a lot, which really helped us, we utilized the middle often. And then uh, me and the snake, I kind of just sat there and let my team do a lot of work. We worked really well together today, and hopefully we make it through being 3-1 and one for tomorrow, Sunday, and uh, hopefully we keep going and probably win this tournament. We wound up just losing uh, right at the end. You know, we got to come at 6-4. We uh, were dealing with penalties all game, and they were running down. I shot the guy before he bunkered sewers, and then he bunkered sewers, so I shot him some more. And then he shot me, so I shot him some more. And then they gave me a major, you know, on that, which is, uh, you know, ref's call, ref's discretion. And, uh, I mean, I'm going to do that every time that someone tries to do that to me. So, it's just how it is. We got to win one more against Russians and move on. And, uh, you know, that's all that matters, just winning the next game. Vicious takes this one 7-4. to four. Up next is Edmonton Impact versus LA Ironman. Let's check in with Impact and see why they're 0-3 for the tournament. Ew. Second thought, let's get the hell away from Impact. This was a long, low-scoring game that came down to who could win the long, drawn-out points. We just played Edmonton Impact. Um, came out, first point, we got a penalty, drug it out. Um, we came out of the box, we still lost the points, so they came up with one. Uh, the next line came out, tied it back up to one. Then we started a really long point. They were picking off our players slowly. I think it came down to a two-on-two played out for a really long time, uh, ended up getting, picking them off slowly. They came back out, won the next, and it was uh, a very, 
very quick point, one minute. We won that point with 13 seconds left on the clock, and they just couldn't finish off. Really close match. We ended up losing by one point in the last, uh, I think there was 14 seconds left in the game. Um, you know what, for the most part, we were up on them. We had position, we had bodies. There was two points, we were four on two. We just gave the points away. Uh, one point went, went, gave it away to a penalty, which doesn't help. And then uh, the other point, we just, just got shot out of our spots like a bunch of idiots. Uh, sometimes it happens, you know. Uh, you like to do better than you did, but that's not always the way it goes. Other than that, it was uh, good to be back for the PSP. Had a good time. The Iron Men take this barn burner three to two. I hate it when guys come up to me and are just crying about you know what's happening or what's not happening. You're not comfortable with the play? I'll play the same five guys the whole time. He didn't like hold a grudge. He's just like you got to fix it or we're not going to win. We we came out looked flat and I was just not going to let that happen. We were going nuts in the pit and everybody's like we got to wake up right now or we're not going to win the tournament. Brad just had a couple good games but he was like I'm ready to go. Words can't even describe what we're feeling. We put in lots of work this season so far, the off season, so it just meant the world to us. It was an unreal feeling. Welcome back to our Saturday coverage of the PSP World Cup. Our next game is Tampa Bay Damage versus Sacramento Excessive. In this back and forth match, Excessive started out with having a hard time trying to live in the snake. Junior Brown gets his pot out and he throws it away. I don't think he did that right. In the next point, Alex Goldman gets up to the 50 and almost gets Bornstein making a move. Then he realizes he's not in a good spot, so he dives over the snake. He advances up the snake, and Rich Telford decides, that's far enough, I'm gonna go stab this dude. Rich doesn't really sound like that, but. He fails at stabbing Alex, and Alex gives him something to think about. However, Bornstein has made it up the field, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Alex makes a break for the flag hang, and he gets it. No, he doesn't. Bornstein gets it. From that point on, Thomas Taylor would rule the snake while his team did some great time management by taking the lead and not leaving damage enough time to score. We've been kind of going back and forth with damage all year. We beat him Huntington Beach, up on points, they came down and bunkered one of our kids kind of shitty. So, and then we knocked him out of Vegas winning the world championship. Not, we didn't really knock them out. They got seven, so they did that shit to themselves. So they talked a bunch of shit about when we played here, how badly they're going to beat us. Got up on a couple points on them and uh, did the same thing they did in Huntington Beach. They just turned their guns up, ran down the field with fucking hits on them, and just blasted the shit out of all of us after the game was over. So it was a, it was a, it was a good battle. I mean, obviously, Damage is a super strong team, a bunch of douchebags, but strong team. Um, and we look forward to playing them again. Excessive wins the grudge match, three to two. The next match is against two undefeated teams, San Antonio X-Factor and Houston Heat. And another long, long, long match. These two teams locked up the field and waited, and waited, and waited, and moved into overtime with a score of two to two. We just had a very long game against uh, X Factor. Um, it was back and forth the whole game. Um, they're a great team, you know, long points, long drawn out points. We ended up uh, winning in overtime, and it was probably the, the longest overtime I've ever seen, probably 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, it was back and forth. One body would die, another body four on four, three on three, and, uh, you know, we ended up pulling out in the end. Winner of that pretty much was guaranteed a uh, buy on Sunday. Uh, came down to an overtime point. I think it was probably an 18, 20 minute point. It felt like forever out there. Uh, got down to a three on three for a long time, and then uh, Grace and him get shot out by the Dorito too. I think it was Fedorov over there made a good shot on him. Uh, so it left me in the snake and uh, Archie in the other Dorito. Uh, neither team had any paint. 
Um, you know, came down, RTG was running out of air, so he tried to run down the Dorito. When I looked up and saw all the commotion, uh, I knew he was running down, so I tried to take the snake out. You know, they won with two alive. It was a great battle. Um, Sunday game, you know, that's a finals game right there. So hopefully we see him again in the future, and then we'll get it next time. Both teams have three wins and will advance to the next round, but Houston Heat still has one game remaining. The next game is Chattanooga, CEP, versus Chicago Aftershock. Neither team had a successful event. Both teams were playing for their first win of the tournament. They shot our camera a few times and went back and forth on the scoreboard. Towards the end, Aftershock pulled away with the lead, while CEP had some paint and hopper issues. Aftershock takes the win, 6-3. Todd Martinez, a fine upstanding citizen of the paintball community since 1995. Todd Martinez has worked diligently to create Raza Paintball a brand that you can trust to outfit you and your team with quality paintball equipment. Know that Todd Martinez is for the people and Raza has a jersey for every type of player. Todd understands the importance of education and paintball which is why Raza designed the FCR jersey specifically for the National Collegiate Paintball Association. Todd believes that we can work together and lower your team's annual spending with awesome team packages. Create your own custom products. Enjoy playing paintball while looking amazing. Choose Raza Paintball in 2013 and make life better for your team. I am Todd Martinez and I approve this message. The next game is the LA Ironman versus Tampa Bay Damage. Ryan Martin gets a penalty in the first point, and Damage takes the first point. Ironman go on the attack, sending Tokihi Hamill at the center. He makes it into Damage territory before getting blasted. Chad Bougier makes his way down the Dorito side and puts the pinch on Rainy Stanzek. Rainy tries a move of desperation, but gets blasted. Get some, Rainy. Hi, my name's Tokihi Hamill. I'm from the LA Ironman. We just played Tampa Bay Damage, took a brutal beating. Six to one. It was uh, they were just smashing us down, smashing us down. We couldn't get grass, we couldn't get a point in. Finally, we scored one point, and that was all we could get. And uh, you know, they just came hard. Just finished up our last prelims game, a 2012 World Cup. I had to play LA Ironman. Been struggling a little bit. You guys must see in previous interviews. Haven't been playing the paint, but we need to. Dropped our game to excessive earlier today. We just didn't play as well as we should have. Uh, came out against LA Ironman, what we had to fix. We. Adjusted our game perfect. It came out with a six to one win, and uh, everything just ended up going our way. The test comes tomorrow, so we need to bring our game up for sure. Ironmen continue with their aggressive play, attacking up the center. They are able to put one lonely point on the board. In the last point, Chad Bouger runs through the center, and Mouse clears the field. Damage wins six to one. Next game is the Red Legion versus Infamous. Having lost early in the day, this game was a must win for Infamous to have a chance to make it into Sunday. In the first point, Damian Ryan runs through the center to take out Kirill. And in the next point, Burdnikov takes a turn running down the center, evening the score. In the next point, Major Wake takes a major penalty, and the Legion find themselves with multiple players in the box. The Legion start the next point with only three players and lose another off the break. Things are looking good for Infamous, but they start losing bodies. Legion is able to hold off Infamous long enough to force them to concede. From here on, the points would continue to go back and forth as teams took major penalties. Here, Axel gets into the box again and accidentally drops his gun. We just played Moscow Red Legion, the Russians. It was both our fourth games. They were 3-0, we were 2-1 going. It was a must-win situation for us. We came out hard, took a couple points, got some majors. They had some majors. It was a fucking bloody knuckle fight to the end. We ended up taking it 
Hopefully we're into Sunday. World Cup, baby, win World Cup. Time expires and Infamous wins 6-3. They go on to Sunday. The last game of the day is San Diego Dynasty versus Houston Heat. In the first point, Dynasty is able to put Heat back on their heels and shoot them out of their bunkers. The second point, Fedorov is able to get into the snake and go to work for Heat. Heat takes out Dalton from the snake and Fedorov gives him a wave. They take out Mesa and Yosh and even the score. We just lost Dynasty by one point. It was a real nice game. It's like always with Dynasty and tomorrow is a different day. We are up, we're on the top right now, we just uh, stand by. Tomorrow we change a little bit more and young number one team. Just got done with our last game at the prelims against Houston Heat. It was uh, pretty much the same as all the, the games going today with the top ranked teams, just a, a, a grind down, uh, close points. No one wanted to make the big mistakes, so you know, it's a, a slow pace. And um, you know, we ended up coming out on top, winning the overtime point, which is really good for us. Ended up with a three and one record, which should be enough to get in tomorrow, but you know, our point differential wasn't good enough, so um, looks like we'll uh, have to wait till next year to, uh, to get another crack at it. Number 15 for me, so uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see. The overtime point doesn't produce much action until Oliver Lang runs through the inside of the snake and bunkers out Chad George. The rest of Dynasty is able to follow behind and close out the point. Dynasty wins the game 3-2 and has a bittersweet end to their season. Thanks for watching this episode of The Dirter Headshot. Make sure you check out our newest digital download, The Reckoning Series, available at Dirter.com. Episode number one features Houston Heat and their instant rise to the top. The Dirter Headshot is sponsored by Razalife.com. Please show your support and head over to their site. Later, bitches.